But there's a problem. And in these few minutes that I have left with you, I want to share with you this. This is a big problem. It's a big problem. I see this problem in America and I'm also seeing it here. I was realistic before I came here. We're a global world now. Does the problem of Amer you know, Muslim youth in America are the same as the problems of Muslim youth in Qatar or in Dubai or in Saudi or in Pakistan or in Egypt? The youth have the same problems. You have the problem of some kids saying, some young people saying, and even older people saying, I know it's haram, but Allah is so merciful, man. He's like, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. I know it's haram, but it, come on, Allah is not gonna, He's not gonna punish me for that. He's gonna take it easy on me. I wanna help you understand this problem. Because Allah described His love and His mercy with such extreme, in a, such an extreme way, some people might try to take advantage of it. Some people might say, it's just a little bit of drugs. It's not that much. I just do it like twice a week. And I don't do it on Friday. And I, I stop all of Ramadan, I stop. I don't drink a single, you know, bottle of liquor in Ramadan. But other than that, sometimes, you know, it's okay. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. I'll make Umrah this year, it'll be fine. You know? They figure out they can just do, eat haram things, look at haram things, do haram things, and it's okay, Allah will take care of it. Allah will forgive. I want to give you an example to help you understand this. One of my earliest jobs was I used to teach at a school. Young kids. These are seven-year-old kids, second, third grade kids. And I thought that I, these kids are going to love me. I will tell them stories. I will make jokes with them. I will d jump up on the desk and I will jump around and entertain them. And I will scare them and all kinds of things. These kids used to love me. I used to go in there and tell jokes and tell stories and they used to be loud. The principal used to come in and say, what's going on here? And I used to say, sorry, 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 we'll calm down. I did this for a whole week with these kids. They absolutely, I used to walk into class and the kids used to clap. <laughs> but then after a week, I go back into class and I say, okay guys, open up chapter 5. Nobody opens up chapter 5. They're all looking at me, tell us a story. Tell us another joke. And kids are talking to each other. There are people jumping around. There's a kid who's got a pencil in his hand and he's writing his name on the wall. And he's looking at me. And he's writing it. And he's looking at me again. And he's writing it. You ever see that happen? And then his friend says, I think he sees you. He says it to him. And he goes, I know, but he's a nice guy. And he keeps going. <laughs> They think I'm merciful. They think I'm kind. So they figure, hey, I mean, this is a nice teacher. We should do whatever we want. When Allah describes His mercy and His love, some slaves of Allah, and they try to take advantage. Like Allah is so merciful, no problem. I'll give you one more example before I conclude. This is, I haven't introduced Allah to you yet. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim is two ayat. There are three ayat that introduce us to Allah. But before I get to the third ayah, I want to give you a simple lesson. Imagine there's a man and he has a slave. So this, this guy has a slave. And he tells the slave, you can do whatever you want. Here's the field. He, had, he owns a field. He said, you can do whatever you want in this field. You can eat whatever you want, go wherever you want. Just don't go on the other side. There's a line, he drew a line in the ch with chalk. Not even a fence, it's just chalk. Just don't go on the other side. So the slave is happy, he could do whatever he wants. And one day the slave is close to the border. And he falls, and he falls on the wrong side. And he immediately looks at the master staring at him. And he says, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, it was a mistake. And the master doesn't say anything. No problem. He doesn't say anything. So he gets up, he dusts himself off, he's okay. Next day he pretends to fall. And then says, sorry, 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 sorry. The master doesn't even get up, doesn't even look angry. He says, this is pretty good. I mean, I mean, he told me not to go on the other side, but I've gone twice and I didn't get in trouble. This must mean it's okay. Some Muslim says, I, I, had, I had some haram substances. And no lightning struck from the sky. Allah did not send like an axe wielding from the sky, chopping my tongue off when I lied. <laughs> it should be okay, Allah is okay with it. You know, you try to earn some money the wrong way, you look up at the sky, oh, nothing happened, I'm okay. I can do some more. 
So this slave starts going on the other side over and over and over again. And a whole year goes by. Now he spends most of his time on the other side. So the, sl- the master calls him. After one year, he calls him. And he says, so how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. You're pretty kind. Love it. And he says, listen, remember when I told you you shouldn't go on the other side? He goes, yeah, I remember. Well, I've decided to punish you for that. But I will punish you for every... I've been counting. Every time you went, and I will punish you for every single time you went, but I will punish you all at the same time. I was holding off. I didn't want to punish you right away. I wanted to punish you eventually. I mean, it was your choice. I didn't stop you from going. I just said, don't go. And I told you there will be consequences. But I've decided to get you right now with all of it. All at the same time, one year's worth of transgression. This is judgment day. The human being thinks you can get away with whatever you're doing. No problem. I did something bad yesterday, nothing bad happened today. I got. I should do it again today. Then I could do it again tomorrow, nothing's gonna happen. It's all good. But Allah Azza wa Jal says, He puts the picture, He balances the picture, He says, مَا عَلِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ He's the master of, he's the owner of the day on which perfect judgment will be executed. Everybody will get exactly what they deserve. He's the master of that day too. So as I leave you in this khutbah, I want to share with you that Allah balanced two things. On the one hand, He is extremely loving, extremely merciful. And on the other hand, if you, don't, if you take advantage of His love and His mercy, then He will judge you too. On judgment day, there are only two kinds of people. People who get judgment, who get accounted, who get audited, that their records are checked, and the people who Allah doesn't check their records, He just lets them go. I want another story before I let you go. I, as soon after 9-11 in America, there was a lot of security at the airports. And of course, they gave Muslims special treatment when they travel. Right, so we had to take your shoes off and go through extra security and pat downs and all of it. It's not like that anymore. The first couple of years were pretty bad. So one time I was traveling and nobody gave me extra security. I traveled like a regular person. I went through the metal detector and they did not say, Sir, sir step on the side, let's give you an extra special treatment because you're a Muslim. Nothing. So I was surprised. I looked at the security guard and I said, <laughs> You know, I don't get it. But immediately the ayah came in my mind, Hisaban Yasira. Allah Azza wa describes on judgment day there will be people who will have their book in their right hand. The guy who gets the hand, book handed to him in his right hand, he will be given an easy audit. You don't have to open your book and show the angels. By the way, on page 35 I have a hajj. Please make sure you check that one. You know, I did, I think I called Laylatul Qadr this Ramadan, if you make sure I get that. The angel says, Gali koini, yo, yo, just go, it's okay, no big deal. They're not checked. But if you get stopped by security on judgment day, and they say, let's see your book, and they open the page, and you even get asked one question, one question, judgment day is bad for you. It's bad for you. إِنَّهُ مَنْ سُؤِلَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَقَدْ هَلَكَ the one who gets asked even one question on judgment day is done, is destroyed. On judgment day, either we will be people under the shade of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, or we will be people under the, the justice of Maliki Yawmiddin. We want Allah Azza wa Jal not to judge us. He want, we want Him to show us His mercy, so we don't take advantage of it. We keep it balanced. This is the essence of who Allah Azza wa Jal is to us. Don't think that you're forgiven just because you do some good deeds. Don't think like that. And don't think Allah will not forgive you. If you've made mistakes all of your life, and you've been, you made mistakes even before you came to Salat today, if you did that, don't think that you're going to hell. You're not. You're not. Who, who says you're going to hell? You're still alive. The opportunity for tawbah is still there. Allah is still letting air into your lungs. He's still letting you breathe, which means He still wants you to come to Him. If He wanted you to be done, you wouldn't be alive right now. Everybody who's alive is because Allah wants them to make tawbah. That's a mercy of Allah to them. So you don't ever think it's too late for me. Or I've done too many bad things. Allah will not forgive me. 
You're not bigger than the, the mercy of Allah. You're not bigger than the forgiveness of Allah. And at the same time, don't you ever think, and I should never think, that I will only do a few bad things, it's no big deal though. I read a lot of Qur'an, I'm okay. I make salat in the masjid, I'm okay. I have some bad habits, they're hard to let go of. But it's okay, Allah will forgive those. Nah, -uh. There are some people who only have one sin. And they keep doing it over and over again. It's one problem they have, and they don't let it go. Allah Azza wa describes this in the Qur'an. بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَتُهُ فَأُولَيْكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ the guy who earned one sin, he's obsessed with one problem. He's got one addiction. It could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be pornography. I don't know, it could be something for you. It could be your anger, it could be abusive language, it could be backbiting. I don't know what your problem is. We all have some problem. But you don't let go of it. You hold on to that sin and you say, it's just one problem. Everything else is good though. You accept it. Then Allah says, you get, in, you get wrapped up into that sin. And those are people of fire. Those are people of fire, they don't let go of their sin. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us accept the fact that we are slaves of His. And may Allah Azza wa Jal help us earn His mercy and His love in this dunya and in the akhirah.